Well then, shall we begin? This is Pixie, one of the most well-known and beloved personas or demons across many of the SMT and Persona games. Why you may ask? Well, judging from the fan art, it's not so hard to figure out why. Pixies are these small, mischievous, fairy-like creatures who like to play tricks on lazy humans. It is also said that they are the souls of dead, unbaptized children? Wait, what? That can't be right. <clears throat> anyway, jokes aside, Pixie is one of the first personas we encounter and befriend not just in Persona 3, but also in the other games as well. Now, in line with being such an early game persona, she is objectively the second weakest persona in the game. She has the second lowest base level and also has one of the lowest stat totals among all the personas in the game. However, as you may or may not have experienced firsthand, looks can be deceiving. Today, the goal is simple to create and transform this harmless little pixie into a godlike persona. One that's even capable of defeating Elizabeth all by herself. Who needs these guys when you have this undead, unbaptized child, am I right? Now before we begin, I've been reading your guys' comments and so I thought that I'd do a more in-depth guide for this persona build instead of just simply showcasing the skills and boss battles. I'll also be going over different strategies later on in the video. And so, without further ado, let me show you how I created my ultimate pixie. First of all, let me reference this extremely useful database that I always use when fusing personas with a specific build in mind. I put the link to it down in the description if you're not already acquainted with it, and I'll be showing you how to use it as we go along. Okay, now let's search for Pixie and see which personas we will need to fuse her. Surprisingly, there's only one recipe we can use for the fusion, which is by combining Silky and Tamlin, two personas of the Lover's Arcana. Aside from this, you also need to consider what skills we would like Pixie to inherit. You'll also want to keep in mind that most skills are obtainable through skill cards, so you'll mainly want to check what skills aren't obtainable this way. This can also be checked in the skill database. Now, different situations will require you to use different builds, but for the sake of this video, we'll be choosing skills and passives with the goal of being able to solo Elizabeth with Pixie. Keeping this in mind, the best build we can go for here will be centered around Ice Magic, as this build will allow for the highest damage output to Elizabeth. This is mainly because of the synergy of Ice Boosting passives with Makoto Steergy, King and I. Now I know Scarlet Havoc probably does more damage, however Slash Driver is exclusive to Sandrion, so sadly that option is out the window for our little pixie. Thus, the first skill we want to pass down would definitely be Diamond Dust. And that's actually it for inheriting skills. The rest of the skills can be obtained via skill cards. Looking up the skill list for Diamond Dust, we learn that it can be obtained from multiple personas with the earliest being Gabriel at level 68. However, for the sake of convenience, we'll be using Skadi instead. Because getting it from Gabriel will require a small amount of grinding even with a bonus EXP from a maxed out social link. Skadi, on the other hand, will learn it straight away at level 69 with the same maxed out Empress social link. Nice. The next thing we need to do is transfer Diamond Dust over to either Tamlin or Silky. For this, we'll be checking the fusion chart which lets us see which arcana we will need to fuse with the Empress Skadi in order to create a Persona of the Lover's Arcana. This makes it easier to simply scale down later on and have Tamlin inherit Diamond Dust. Checking the fusion table, we see that in order to get the persona from the Lover's Arcana with an Empress, we will need to fuse Skadi with the persona from the Judgment Arcana. Just summon the cheapest one you have in the compendium. Now I had a bit of a complication with my route, so I needed to fuse Loki with the Justice persona. After this, just keep fusing the resulting Lovers with the lower level persona from the Lover's Arcana as well, and eventually, you will scale down to Tamlin and Silky. Phew! That actually took a bit of work to set up, but with that out of the way, we're pretty much good to go with our Pixies build. Or are we? Okay, so there's one more specific skill I haven't mentioned yet. That skill is Magic Mastery. 
This skill is considered to be the rarest skill in the game and can only be obtained via skill change. I didn't mention it earlier because I really don't recommend trying to get this skill on Pixie. Firstly, because it can't be inherited by other personas, and secondly, because it's simply better to get on the DLC personas, which will outclass any non DLC persona in terms of damage anyway. Despite this, let me quickly share with you my experience to obtain this skill on Pixie. Let me tell you that this was probably the most mind numbing experience ever so far in this video game. Even worse than the RNG it took when trying to beat Elizabeth in 4 turns. I spent an ungodly amount of time fusing pixie after pixie, reloading save after save to no avail. You better have a second monitor with YouTube or Netflix while you're doing this because this might take a very very long time to get. Unless of course RNGesus is smiling down upon you. Now, there are some strategies to have better odds of obtaining this skill, like using the highest tier of skills, which is rank 8, and also attempting the skill change as close as possible to a full moon. Sadly, it all still boils down to luck at the end of the day. All in all, it took me quite literally more than 8 hours of my Saturday, and more than 240 gigabytes of footage later, until it finally happened. Okay, I'm done. I'm done! I can't do this anymore, man. Screw this. I had finally reached my breaking point. Yeah, that's right. I wasn't able to get Magic Mastery, sadly. I did do a few more attempts the next day, but it was more or less the same result. Since I really couldn't obtain this skill via skill change, I had to resort to some less conventional methods, so to speak. I know, I know. Luckily, only one of the strategies I'm about to show you guys requires you to have magic mastery. Otherwise, many people will say that it just isn't worth it to get this skill. And honestly, they're right. It just isn't worth the trouble to get this skill when physical skills are that much better than magic skills in this game. So before we get to soloing Elizabeth, leveling up and finalizing Pixie's build is fairly straightforward. We kill the reaper a bunch of times, let Pixie smoke some of that incense, and finally, give her the last bit of skill cards that she needs. With all that said and done, we end up with two main builds for this challenge. This first build is mainly for fighting Elizabeth without relying on any form of phase skipping. This is also why I chose passives like Firm Stance and Regenerate in order to soak up most of Elizabeth's attacks while at the same time being able to dish out decent damage with Diamond Dust and King and Die. This is also where I dump all of my useful items like Empowering and Debilitator Sutras, Heat Riser Potatoes, Concentrated Herbs, and Super Athlete Meals. Also, don't forget to have Enduring Soul on one piece of equipment as well. You'll also want Shoes of Bane to preserve the Endure proc for the grand finale. And now, I give you the grand finale. I bring you Megidora. Finally, we have the Pixie build which allows you to defeat Elizabeth in 5 turns solo. This is very similar to doing this in 4 turns with DLC Personas. The only difference is we debuff her defense with Rakunda on the first turn, and then on the following turn, we also deal significantly more damage with King and I and Magic Mastery, putting her straight into Phase 2 as compared to the previous fight. We will also need Endure on Pixie and Enduring Soul on one piece of equipment to do the phase skips. Elizabeth will then hit herself and then the turn after, we end the fight with an Armageddon. Now I don't take any credit for this strategy and simply just wanted to test this for myself. I'll leave a link to the people who did it first on YouTube in the description. Well, that's all I have for this video. I'll let you guys enjoy the rest of this boss fight and I will see you on the next one. Bye bye